Hi everyone, this is Dr. Manu Krishnan K. And today we discuss about the lobes of the cerebrum. And as you all know, there are four lobes and a few extra points that you will see in the further slides. So here you can see the four lobes here. That is the frontal lobe, which is colored yellow. The parietal lobe, which is colored blue. The occipital lobe, which is colored green. And the temporal lobe, which is colored red. So these are the major lobes that you should keep in mind when you just remember the term cerebrum. So there are four major lobes in the cerebrum, namely the frontal lobe, parietal lobe, occipital lobe and the temporal lobe. And these lobes are well demarcated on the superolateral surface of the cerebrum by the prominent sulci. And in addition to the four lobes, there are two other lobes which are the insular lobe and the limbic lobe. So let's see how these lobes are demarcated. So the prominent sulci which are present on the superolateral surface are the posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus, the central sulcus and the parieto occipital sulcus. So I repeat there are three prominent sulci which separates the lobes. The first one the posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus, the central sulcus and the parieto occipital sulcus. So here we have a representation where I have just removed all other sulci and gyri and only kept the prominent sulci. So this one over here is the central sulcus which separates the frontal lobe from that of the parietal lobe. And this sulci here, the prominent sulci running backwards and slightly upwards is the lateral sulcus or the posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus. And here you can see a small prominent sulcus that is the parieto occipital sulcus. So how you will define these sulci? So that is the next question that rises. How you will define it? So we will see the posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus it begins near the temporal pole and runs backwards and slightly upwards and posterior most part of the posterior ramus curves sharply upwards. So this we will see once again in the diagram. So let's see the next sulcus that is the central sulcus. It begins on the supramedial margin or border just behind the midpoint between the frontal pole and the occipital pole. So it begins just behind the midpoint between the frontal pole and the occipital pole. Then it runs downwards and forwards to end a little above the posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus. So it's very easy to remember. Here we will start with the posterior ramus. So this one is the posterior ramus. It starts just behind the temporal pole. Then it runs backwards and slightly upwards until it reaches the posterior most part where it tracks sharply upwards. So this is the lateral sulcus, the posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus. And when it comes to the central sulcus, it starts from here you know that this is the frontal pole and this is the occipital pole. So if I draw a line here and mark the midpoint, it will come around here. So the central sulcus begins just before the midpoint of the line drawn between the occipital pole and the frontal pole. So that is this is the midpoint and just before that we have the starting point of the central sulcus. Then it runs downwards and forwards to stop at just little above the posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus. Hope you understood the central sulcus and posterior ramus of lateral sulcus. So these are the two points that you should remember about the prominent sulci. The lateral sulcus, the posterior ramus, it runs backwards and slightly upwards and the posterior most part runs sharply upwards. While the central sulcus starts 
just behind or just before the midpoint between the occipital pole and the frontal pole and it runs downwards and forwards and ends little above the posterior ramus of lateral sulcus. So that defines the posterior ramus and the central sulcus. The next one is the parieto occipital sulcus. So on the medial surface of the cerebrum, we have seen there is a connection between the two cerebrum, that is the corpus callosum. So there lies the medial surface. We have discussed in the previous class. So that medial surface bears a Y-shaped sulcus posteriorly where the upper limb of the Y-shaped sulcus is termed as the parieto occipital sulcus. So the, on the medial surface on the posterior part, there lies a Y-shaped sulcus which is having two limbs. So the Y you can see here, there is a Y-shaped uh, sulcus. The upper limb of the Y is parieto occipital sulcus and that is what we have seen in the suprolateral surface. That particular sulcus will extend into the suprolateral surface and that defines the parieto occipital sulcus. While the other limb of the Y is called as calcarine sulcus that we will be discussing later. And there are two imaginary lines which can be drawn to separate the other two lobes. So the first imaginary line it connects between the upper end of the pareto occipital sulcus to the preoccipital notch. While the second imaginary line that is backward continuation of the posterior ramus of lateral sulcus to meet the first line. So the first imaginary line, I repeat, it connects the upper end of the pareto occipital sulcus to the preoccipital notch. While the second imaginary line it is the backward continuation of posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus to meet the first line. So here you have a representation here. So here will be the pareto occipital sulcus. So the upper part of the pareto occipital sulcus is connected with the preoccipital notch. So this is the occipital pole. So before that there lies a small notch and that is called the preoccipital notch. So a line drawn connecting between the upper part of parieto occipital sulcus and the preoccipital notch is termed as the first imaginary line. And the second imaginary line is the backward continuation of the posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus and finally it meets the first imaginary line. So this one over here is the second imaginary line. So these two lines helps in separating the other lobes. So here you can see in front of the central sulcus, you can see the frontal lobe. Just behind the central sulcus, demarcated between the first imaginary line behind and the second imaginary line below, that is the parietal lobe. Then here the temporal lobe and here the occipital lobe. So let's see how we will define each lobes. So the lobes can be defined as follows. The frontal lobe that is anterior to the central sulcus and above the posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus. It's very easy. If you can draw the diagram and uh, repeat the same, you can only write down these sentences. So the frontal lobe lies anterior to the central sulcus and above the posterior ramus of lateral sulcus. While the parietal lobe, it lies behind the central sulcus and it is bounded below by the posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus and by the second imaginary line and behind by the first imaginary line. So the parietal lobe, it lies behind the central sulcus, then it is bounded below by posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus and by the second imaginary line. And the behind it is demarcated by the first imaginary line that we have seen in the previous diagram. Then the occipital lobe. The occipital lobe is the area that is lying behind the first imaginary line. So we have seen the previous diagram, we have seen how the imaginary lines are formed and how they are separating the 
lobes. So the same thing we are discussing here as written sentences. So the temporal lobe, that is the last one, it lies below the posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus and the second imaginary line and it is separated from the occipital lobe by the lower part of the first imaginary line. It's very logical to think that you have seen the diagram so try to recall that diagram and read through the sentences. And I have told about the lobes here. So you can see the frontal lobe which lies in front of the central sulcus. The parietal lobe lies behind the central sulcus and behind it is demarcated by the sec first imaginary line upper part then below it is demarcated by the posterior ramus of lateral sulcus and the second imaginary line. So these are the boundaries of parietal lobe and the occipital lobe lies behind the first imaginary line. This is the first imaginary line so the occipital lobe lies behind that while the temporal lobe lies below the posterior ramus of lateral sulcus and the second imaginary line and behind it is demarcated by the lower part of first imaginary line. So this is how the lobes are separated. Let's discuss about the two other lobes that is the insular lobe or island of real. It is an area of cortex that lies in the depth of lateral sulcus and hence hidden from the surface view. So once you open up the lateral sulcus, if you separate it either ways or split it onto the either sides, then you will find a small area of cortex which lies in the depth of lateral sulcus. And that is termed as the insular lobe or the insula. While the limbic lobe is a part of limbic system forming a border between the telencephalic and the diencephalic structures. So you might be wondering what is telencephalic and diencephalic structures. That we will be discussing later in the explanation of the embryological development of cerebrum. So hope you understood the topic. So this is how the cerebrum is divided into lobes and these are the prominent sulci which separate them. Thank you.